Lord. Again, it's an honor to be here tonight. And uh, love Brother Sister Seville, the family. Love you all here. And I appreciate what God's doing here. Amen. I hope you realized how blessed you are. Amen. To have a man of God as your pastor. I preach all over, all over. Amen. When you come to the house of God and hear the word of God and feel the presence of God, you don't realize how much you are. Yes, we are. Guys. Praise the Lord. I'm not just saying that. I don't have to say it. I mean it. Praise you God. don't realize that you need to get behind the burden, the vision. Amen. And, 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 and just get behind it. Whatever you got to do, lay aside. Do it. Right. Amen. One mind, one accord, a body grows, a body goes forth. Now I can't do one thing. And this arm do another thing. Sure. You know, I mean if, if you know if I'm gonna hammer something, I've got to have one hand holding the nail and the other hand. I can't have the nail right here and the hammer hit me on the head. Right. You know, I can't saw over here and hold the nail. Yeah, that might mean saw and the nail might mean nail. Amen. But we all work together under the leadership of God's divine authority. Things happen. Amen. Maybe not in our time. Maybe not as always we like, but that's how God blesses. That's how God said it. And you will prosper. Amen. And God will bless you and open doors and opportunities, amen, in, in your sphere, whether at work or in your neighborhood or whatever, amen, as you do that. Isaiah 64 tonight. Amen. amen. Every time you say, I'm feeling hot in here, why don't you say, God bless the preacher? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and God will move tonight, amen. Yeah, we can do that. He will. He will. Amen. God got a lot of text tonight. I'm going to read, and uh, this is the message I've been on my heart lately, and I could not get rid of it. Isaiah 64, verse number one, and and Isaiah is crying out. You feel you're going to feel the passion, verse number one. <laughs> And he said, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heaven, that thou wouldest come down, that the might mountains might flow down at thy presence. Every was this was God will just break through. Amen. Praise God. The heavens are brass. The wall that's in front of you, and you're beating, you're trying, you're praying, you're living right, you're you're doing right, but nothing. Amen. He said, Oh, that thou would just rip open the heavens and come down. Right, right. Mark 27, 10, 27, you know, I'll turn there. And Jesus looking upon them will say that with men it is impossible, but not with God. For you, you tried and you've, you've made an attempt and you're doing everything you know to do, to do but it's impossible. But not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Luke 1 37 says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 32 17. Oh, Lord God, behold. of how things are made and Amen. animals are made and, 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 and the sky. We got to go to the Creation Museum a few weeks ago and, and do their night sky and look through a telescope and, and, uh, and just see the beauty of God. Amen. And he has made that. He has made the earth. And, by thy strength, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Lord of heaven, and I, I simply like to preach on two words, and suddenly. And suddenly. That word suddenly means...
means without warning, unexpectedly, taken by surprise. Have you ever they've been coming stealthily without a transition? Have you ever just been sitting in your house and all of a sudden you get a knock on the door? You look out and open up and there's somebody you long to see and they surprised you by coming in. Amen. Suddenly, amen. Five times, I'm going to look at it in the New Testament where God moved in some form and fashion suddenly and turned things around. We know the number five in the Bible is the number of grace. And so five times where even things were looking despairingly, discouraging, full of doom. Amen. Suddenly, God showed up.
awesomeness, blown away by his brightness, dazzled by his divineness, stunned by his supremeness tonight. Amen. And suddenly, when you thought he was all alone, amen, you're going to be struck right where you're at. Amen. You'll realize the cloud has dissipated, the confusion has disappeared. Suddenly I was in the dark, or rather it was dusty. Amen. Suddenly the cloud had disappeared. Amen. And God spoke to me. And I saw Jesus. I believe God can give you that kind of miracle. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Number two, Luke chapter 2, verse 13. The Bible said, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Amen. Can I remind you of that story? Amen. The shepherds were sitting there watching their flocks by night. You know it. It was dark out that night. Amen. Midnight or after. Amen. They were sitting around the fire. Some of them was asleep. They were discussing who's going to take two o'clock watch, who's going to take third watch. Amen. Where are we going to lead the sheep? I mean, just nothing but business was being talked about. Amen. It was nighttime. Not only was it dark that night for the shepherds, but it was dark over the nation of Israel. Amen. 400 years of silence. Amen. 400 years of no prophet crying out a fresh word of the Lord. Amen. No angel appearing. The Shekinah glory had left the temple. Amen. You think you've been in a trial lately. Amen. How about a 400 year one when it's dark? Amen. All around you. <laughs> Amen. But in the midnight of darkness we find the surprise of the suddenly. Amen. The Bible said God sent an angelic host of angels saying for unto you Christ the Lord knows this day. Amen. And I still believe God has a this day where he was to birth you a miracle. You see, God's not so much about the future as he is the present. He told Zacchaeus, this day is salvation. Amen. Come to your house. Amen. I'm glad to say he is still the great I am. He's not the God of 50 years ago of revivals. He's not the God
vision. Acts 9 3, the Bible said, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and what? Suddenly. There shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice. Amen. Remember Paul <clears throat> on the way to Damascus. Paul had been religious. But he did not have a relationship with the Lord. With the Lord, he had a form, but he had no fire. There was a proclamation, but there was no even <laughs> practice. <laughs> so Paul, I left that morning to go to Damascus, amen, to take care of business with no thought of hearing from God. He left that morning on his personal mission, amen. We all come here tonight for different reasons sometimes. And some of you are here because you love God, you love the house of God. Amen. Some people go to church out of guilt or habit or they're forced to or coerced tonight. Amen. But Paul is on the way. He wasn't thinking about a move of God. He wasn't thinking about hearing from God. No, without warning, amen, a sudden confrontation with Christ shattered his plans. His light was blind. His eyes were blinded by the brightness of the Lord. He was thrown to the dust of the earth tonight. Amen. I would to God whatever your reason is for being here tonight. Amen. That you would get a glimpse of God in his glory in this service. Amen. I'm glad we were just sitting in the pew. And sometimes our mind wonders, mine has before. Paul, 
on the way to go kill Christians. Right. On the way to go drag God's people to jail. And God arrest him on the way. Oh, Amen. I want you to know some of you have been praying about your family. Some of you have been praying about your friends. <laughs> some of you have been praying about some people that used to go to this church and, and you're burdened you and you say, God, I see them. Amen. They're, they're doing this and they're doing that. And they're driving down the road. And God, they have no thought of you. Amen. They're going places tonight. <laughs> Amen. With no thought of you, they're about doing their own business tonight. Amen. But can I tell you, amen, what God the other thing is impossible. And I believe God can get a hold of them as they're driving down the road, as they're on the way to Walmart, as they're here, as they're there, wherever they're at. Even God can save you a loved one. Even God can pick them up.
And suddenly God can see in the down, divine downpour. Praise God. Revival. Amen. We know it. Acts chapter 2, verse 2. And suddenly <laughs> there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. For ten days they had waited. Ten days they had prayed. <laughs> they had separated <clears throat> themselves from everything. For ten days they had sought God. Amen. Would it ever happen? Would the Holy Spirit ever be given? Would the promise, amen, of the Father ever come? Amen. I want to ask some of you tonight, amen, how long have you been waiting for a move of God in your life? How long have you been waiting for a touch of the Holy Ghost in your life tonight? Amen. Maybe they were tired of standing. I don't know. Maybe they were tired of kneeling on the crowd. But we find them sitting, amen, just like we are. Amen. Sitting there, they had prayed. They had sung and stood in worship. But now they're sitting. And the Bible said that suddenly, amen, there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. And the Holy Ghost filled the house. He filled each of them. Amen. Every one of them had a reaction. Amen. Every one was, had a, was set on fire and suddenly. Amen. Can I tell you, did this taste God just an instant to see a revival where everything changed? Do you realize five minutes before the Holy Spirit came? Amen. There was just no church, just a bunch of people together. Come and help me. And 
he finally rolled up, examined it, and, and told her, well, ma'am, here's the problem. You're out of gas. And here's what she said. She says, will it hurt if I drive it home with the gas tank empty? <laughs> Amen. You know what? Sometimes we come to church broken down. I said we come to church broken down. And we ask ourselves, amen, will it hurt if I drive home, amen, with the gas tank empty? Amen. The reason why some of us are rolling but we're not going anywhere, amen, is because we need another refilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When I come to tell you tonight, it's my life. Let's stand tonight.